You might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed by how much coverage Skidoo's 2024 850 E-Tech Turbo Trail Sled is getting these days, but it's all for a very good reason. It only takes one ride on the turbocharged competition package 852 stroke trail sled to get even the most repressed snowmobiler excited. While there's already a lot of info about this power package out there, the responses we got on our virtual hangout on this sled on YouTube proved viewers were looking for a bit more in-depth information. So I called in a few favors at BRP and got on the phone with the guys who actually designed this motor to get as much info as they were allowed to give me. And what I found out actually kind of surprised me. First, it would be understandable if you believed, as I did, that the turbocharged trail version of the 850 E-Tech was different from the naturally aspirated 850 E-Tech. It's a reasonable assumption. Two strokes aren't known to handle boost very well without making some important changes. So why then are the naturally aspirated and boosted versions of the 850 E-Tech identical inside and out? Like, how is that even possible? Even the compression ratios are identical. Literally, the parts inside out are exactly the same. The reason is that Skidoo knew the 850 E-Tech would eventually have a factory turbo from the first day they started designing the motor over seven years ago, back when the idea of a factory turbocharged two-stroke trail sled was basically just a pipe dream for us, the BRP engine guys were already figuring out how to do it. So this is definitely interesting, but it's also extremely important because the fact that the turbocharged version of the 850 has the exact same compression ratio as the naturally aspirated version is a fundamentally important part of why this engine works so well. Where most turbocharged engines compensate for the additional internal pressures by lowering the compression ratio and therefore losing power before the boost kicks in, the E-Tech Turbo maintains the exact same level of performance pre-boost as the NA version. So between the time of hitting the throttle and the boost kicking in, you still get all the impressive power of an 850 with no compromises. This was something that was immediately noticeable the first time I rode this sled and something anybody who's upgrading to a Skidoo 850 Turbo is really gonna appreciate. It also means that when you're simply trail riding the turbo but not pushing it hard enough to get into the boost, you'll still enjoy exactly the same fuel efficiency as the non-boost 850. The only time you actually use more fuel is when you get on the gas and really push it hard. So it's like a pay-to-play system. You only spend extra on fuel when you really want to. The second thing I learned about Skidoo's 850 E-Tech Turbo is that the story behind its methanol injection system is a lot more complex than simply not wanting to use an intercooler to lower intake temps. In fact, the reason behind this choice was the complete opposite of what I think most of us assumed it was, which is that the system created too much heat for an intercooler to manage, when in fact the truth is that the system doesn't create enough heat for an intercooler to do any good. And the reason behind this is pretty straightforward. Everyone knows that one of the most important aspects of turbocharged engine performance is intake air temperature. Compressing air generates heat. Every joint or fitting in the intake track of a turbocharged engine has the potential to leak boost pressure. When that compressed air pressure is lost, the turbo has to work harder to create more boost to compensate. This extra boost generates more heat. Typically, you'd add an intercooler to help reduce that heat but the intercooler itself requires more joints and fittings with the potential to leak even more boost pressure. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. BRP engineers spent countless hours designing a turbo and an intake track that would have the least amount of pressure loss possible, which in turn would require the least amount of boost possible, which in turn would create the least amount of heat possible. The end result was intake air temps that were so low an intercooler was actually ineffective in cooling it any further. So the idea came up to design a methanol injection system to do the job the intercooler was too inefficient to do, and the result is definitely clear. The final thing I want to talk about is what is a methanol injection system and how does it work? But before I do that, I need to clear up a couple misconceptions. First, it's called a methanol injection system. However, that isn't entirely accurate. It's actually a water injection system. It's the water that actually does the work of cooling the intake track. And second, the methanol's only job is to keep the water from freezing. It serves no actual mechanical function. The injection happens between the throttle body and the reed pedals. This is to ensure that it gets evenly mixed with the air and the fuel, and that it gets evenly dispersed between both cylinders. The water itself actually does two different things. First, it cools the intake air temps, which is paramount to creating maximum horsepower. However, it also reduces the temperature of the actual cylinder itself when the water is vaporized during combustion. This helps prevent detonation. 
The system was designed to be seamless and invisible, which means you, the rider, can't tell when it's happening. And I can confirm after riding it that you can't, in fact, tell when it's happening at all. Another important clarification that needs to be made is that the methanol mixture BRP sells is not the same as other methanol mixtures you can find at the auto parts store. It includes anti-foaming agents and additional lubrication agents that are absolutely necessary for the system to function properly. So don't cheap out, just buy the XPS GoFast juice. I hope this has given you, as it has me, more insight into how Skidoo's 850 Turbo Trail Sled was designed and why it was designed the way it was. It certainly has given me a better appreciation for what's actually happening under the hood.